Hey there. Um, in continuing the past out of what you're doing, um, the, uh, earlier I talked about um, how to shift if you want to stay kind of in a corporate more, um, I want to say stable because that's what I used to believe that a regular job was um, until I laid off, so it's not really stable. But, you know, the seemingly more stable and um, and how, how to pivot um, out of something that you were doing now into something that you want to be doing and how you can approach that from a couple of different ways. And today, I want to talk about um, what happens when you decide to start your own business. Um, assuming that you're sticking with broadly what you do. So if you're um, an accountant, you're doing accounting. If you're doing, if you're a lawyer, you're going out on your own. If you're um, a marketing consultant or a marketing expert, you're doing marketing um, as a consultant. Um, so that's probably the most straight, uh, much like the, um, uh, the last time I talked about how, if you were um, an accountant um, in some particular industry and you wanted to move into nonprofits, um, even if you didn't want to stay in accounting forever, that's an easy transition to go from um, industry to nonprofit and then um, start feeling up different things in nonprofit once you're already in that industry. So um, this is very, uh, very analogous to that is if you're working um, in a particular field and then you go out to do it on your own. Um, one of the challenges, obviously, is if you have a non-compete agreement um, that can that can impact what you're able to do. Um, I am not an attorney skilled in talking about this. I do know that um, the varying depending on the state um, depends on how favorably they look um, at at non-compete agreements. Um, some states are like, eh, you know, people are allowed to make a living. Um, other states are a little stricter. So it would depend, um, and it would depend on how closely you were aligning. I mean, obviously nobody, uh, nobody is okay with you stealing <laughs> clients, um, that, uh, that you have from your current company. That's, uh, pretty much frowned upon everywhere. But if you were to go out, um, on your own and be competing in that market and bringing on other people who might have gone to your company, um, yeah, it, I mean, that can get a little messy. Um, and so probably then you would want to, um, consult with an attorney. Uh, but if you were just, um, you know, assuming that that is all worked out, um, the the hardest part is then getting clients um transitioning to working for yourself um i mean there's there's things that you would have to figure out you have to figure out if you need to carry any kind of insurance um you need to figure out if you need to um get your own health insurance if you aren't covered under a spouse's plan but there's not as much to do as as you think um where this gets a little bit more challenging is because of those non-compete agreements, it can be hard to build something like this on the side because you can't be consulting as an attorney in the same field that you are working as an attorney, um, I imagine. Um, I, I, I especially think that's true um, as an attorney. So, um, so it would be harder to do it on the side without directly competing for um, for business. And so you get into a much more touchy dance. Um, possibly if you were um, working in an adjacent field, but not directly competing, that might work. Um, it depends on how your agreements are with your um, your company. So say you're, um, you're an accountant, for a big accounting firm and all of your, um, all of the clients there are, you know, multi-million dollar clients and you want to start doing accounting for some small businesses um, who would never go to your firm. You would, you would still, I expect, want to discuss that with your, your, with your company to make sure that there weren't any issues, but that would be seemingly enough of a move away that you're not directly competing. So there are options like that if you are unable to or unwilling to just jump in and, and try to build um, build enough of a client base that you don't need to, to work. Um, 
So it, it's complicated in, in more of the process because you are, um, there are going to be certain expectations of what, um, what you will do and won't do um, with respect to your current employer. And that's going to vary based on where you live and, um, and any agreements that you've signed. Um, the other option is it, assuming that you can, either you're relocating or you're doing something different enough that you're not competing or that you don't have a non-compete and you are just going to go all in. Um, that is also an option. Um, but to do that, you're going to want to make sure you have a fair bit of savings set aside um, or, you know, an alternate source of income that's going to help carry you along until you can build something up. Um, it, it may be easier for you to build up your client list if you're coming, you know, it's, if it's a very direct transfer, like accounting to accounting or um, marketing consulting um, to marketing consulting or, um, you know, uh, law firm practice to private practice, where it's very direct and you aren't going to have um, people that you, or you aren't going to have the difficulty of people saying, uh, is this really what you can do? Um, because you, you have all of that experience with you. So the trickier part is, um, is getting used to marketing yourself um, and understanding how much you should charge. And, um, and I think I'm going to do something on that uh, in, a, in another video, kind of understanding what um, what your hourly rates or billable rates are and um, and how what you earn right now at your company and what they pay, like there's your salary, there's what you take home. There's also what your employer actually pays. It's more than your salary to have you as an employee and how um, that can help you, that knowledge helps you uh, not only make sure that you're making enough money because it's not enough to say, I make fifty dollars an hour now. I just need to charge people fifty dollars an hour because um, you won't. You you you'll end up um, in the hole if you're trying to you know make the same amount of money across the um, across the transition. So I'm going to do something about that because it gets a little bit more. It gets a little complicated. But beyond um, beyond those like technical details, that is switching from your current field where you have a lot of experience. Um, into a um, small business where you are using that same experience to help a different audience or maybe even a similar audience. It's probably one of the more straightforward ways to go. Um, yet, like I said, the tangles are more um, structural and legal, what you're able to do, how quickly you're able to do it, and um, and how how well you're supported um, during that transition, whether it's something you can build on the side until you're like, yes, this is viable and can leave from the end, knowing that if I don't have to work full time, I can take on more clients and that will more than compensate what I need. Or if you would need to go all in and what kind of cushion would you need for yourself um, in order to build that and probably do some preliminary um, planning on how you would market and build up your um, your client base because you wouldn't want to go from um, this idea that you're going to do this and then leave your job and then have to start marketing um, or figure out your marketing then. You want to at least be set and ready to go as soon as you're um, able to launch. So while it's a straightforward move, it isn't... Um, there are there are moving parts to juggle, but like anything that's worth doing, there's going to be some some hurdles you have to overcome. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the not only starting your own thing, but doing it in a field where you are not um, a perceived or known expert, or it's not as straightforward to um, to say, oh yes, I have you know this equivalent experience. It takes a little bit more. Um, thought and planning and um, and preparation and um, understanding that you're going to have to do a little bit more, not hard smarmy selling, but you you have to be you have to be able to believe what you're saying um, in order to convey that you're able to add value with what you say you're going to do. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that next time. Um, please like and subscribe to make sure you get updated on that. And I will see you soon.